Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am going to be talking skincare today and I just realized I don't have my ring on. I love how I do that. I'm like, I just realized I don't have my ring on. I realize I have broccoli in my teeth. I realize I may not really be ready for this video, <laughs> but we're going to do it anyways. As I was saying, we are going to be talking skincare today. And as you saw from the title, we are going to be talking minimal skincare routines. I know I recently did my AM and PM skincare routine, and I also know that I am very high maintenance when it comes to my routines. I'm the first person to admit that. I love product. I love product. I love makeup product. I love skincare product. It's why I became a makeup artist. It's what got me into it. It's why I started my YouTube channel. Product is joy to me. So I use a lot of it. I try a lot of it, um, but you don't need to use all of it. And I know a lot of people, um, you know, most of the people are very nice. In fact, I don't think I got any negative comments on my last skincare routines, but in the past I have gotten comments where, uh, you know, the price is outrageous. People can't do this and this and that. And look, I get it. Like not everybody can do all of those products. So now that I am 40 years old, I can actually put on my titles over 40 skin or 40 and over skin. And I have sat and thought about what would happen if, if I lost my entire skincare collection, which, oh my goodness, that just, why am I holding these? My kids got into them and I, they were on my table. <laughs> I'm all over the place. It would break my heart, obviously, if I lost my entire skincare collection, but I also would not be able to replace my entire skincare collection right away. So I started thinking about, okay, what would I make sure I bought first? What, when I really think about what my core collection needs to be, would I make sure I have included in my repurchases? So if you're new to my channel, my name is Mandy. I am 40 years old. I have normal to sometimes dry skin, but mostly normal skin. And I love skincare. I am not an esthetician. I am a makeup artist who constantly has clients sitting in my chair asking me what they need to be using on their skin. Now, obviously, I am not here to tell you what you have to use because, again, I'm not an esthetician. I am a lover of estheticians. I am a user of an esthetician. I have someone who has worked on my skin for the past 16 years and it's hard for me to trust anybody else to touch it. I highly suggest you find a reputable esthetician in your area to get a consult. Even if you, you know, can't afford treatments, go get a consult. See what they think you need to use on your skin. I am just sharing what works for me and what I recommend to people who ask. I'm going to link everything I talk about down in the description box. I do have coupon codes. Be sure and check those out under my discount code section of the description box because most, all of these, most of them, not all, can be gotten with a discount. So check that out for sure. So let's go ahead and jump in. I personally believe there are five categories of skincare that everybody should have in their routine, especially if they are more on the preventative track of aging. We all age. Look, it's way better than the alternative. I am the first to admit. But I wanna age gracefully. Okay, I know I am going to be 70 with wrinkles. I'm not trying to be 70 with no wrinkles. I am just trying to look my best at 70, just like I'm trying to look my best at 40. And these five categories are what I think will get you there. So let's go ahead and start with the first category, which is a good solid cleanser. I don't think a lot of people truly understand how important cleansers are in a skincare routine. I mean, it's one of the most important. If you don't have clean skin, the other stuff that you put on top is not gonna penetrate. It's going to cause product buildup. You're probably gonna get breakouts. I mean, I had a mom growing up who told me that one of the cardinal sins was going to bed with makeup on. So I have always been a cleanser of the skin. I personally cleanse twice a day, and I thoroughly believe it is one of the most important parts of your routine. Now there are, Umpteen kajillion cleansers out on the market. I've talked about my favorites and my routines. These are the two that I just pulled out of my skincare basket right now. This is the Beauty Counter Counterstar Cocoa Cream Cleanser. I have about that much left. 
I love this stuff. This kind of took the place of the Nourishing Cream Cleanser, which used to be my absolute favorite cleanser of all time. This is fairly affordable in the realm of products I'm gonna be talking about. It's only $20. It lasts a long time. You don't need a lot. It's very moisturizing. It is a cream cleanser. So if you have super oily skin, I would go with the pore cleanser from Beauty Counter or even the Counter Match foaming cleanser. But this for me, for normal to even combo or dry skin is my favorite. And I use this both morning and night, but especially in the morning. And then at night, I double cleanse. If you wanna see more about that, you can go look at my routines. I'm just talking about actual skin cleansers, not really makeup removers. This is another one that's been my absolute favorite for years. This is the Sunita's Milk and Honey Cleanser. Again, more for dry skin. In fact, I love that Sunita's signifies that on their packaging. This says dry. They have, I believe, a lemon cleanser for normal. I'm not quite sure what their oily cleanser is, but I don't think you could go wrong with any of the Sunita's cleansers. The Milk and Honey, this is a travel size. I have gone through probably four of the big sizes. Again, it is a cream cleanser. It smells divine. It smells so good. And it just works. I really, really like it. So those are the ones that I'm rotating through now. But I honestly feel like cleansers are not given enough credit with how important they are in a skincare routine. The next thing I think is pretty imperative to have in your skincare is antioxidants, most specifically vitamin C. I know that there are people, even dermatologists out in the YouTube world that say you do not need vitamin C on your skin. I vehemently disagree with that. I think vitamin C is something that has completely changed my skin over the years and I honestly do not and would not want to be without it. So I think it's very important because antioxidants obviously fight against physical aggressors out in the world. I mean, it fights against pollution in the air. It works synergistically with your SPF. They help each other work better. I just think you need it. Now, there are lots of different forms and derivatives of vitamin C. The most pure is L-absorbic acid. A lot of people cannot use L-absorbic acid. It can tend to make your skin a little bit more irritated than others. I have two vitamin Cs here that I love. One is an L-absorbic acid. One is a tetrahexdecal absorbate which is a derivative of vitamin C. It is much easier to use on sensitive skin. Now, both of these are gonna be more expensive. I do like the Maylove vitamin C. I do feel like it didn't last me as long before it turned, but that could have just been the bottle. And that's another thing you have to worry about with L-exorbic acid is it, it does tend to be less stable than other forms of vitamin C. So you have to make sure it does not oxidize and turn. Because if it does, it can actually start doing more, more harm to your skin. Um, so just be aware of that if you do get an LAA version of vitamin C. So my favorite L-exorbic acid version is the Is Clinical Pro Heal Serum Advanced. This is the little half ounce version. I love that they give you the option to buy a half ounce versus an ounce. And I have used the ounce before. And it, I mean, I love the product, but I just feel better when I'm, when I'm using an LAA version of vitamin C to not get a huge bottle so that I have less of a chance of it turning before I can use it up. So this is a great vitamin C. I love this vitamin C. In fact, I have gotten to where I will use this in conjunction with my next one that I'm going to talk about, depending on whether or not I use an acid in the morning. So if I use, because I use an acid about three to four times a week now as a toning step. Now, if I use an acid as a toner, I'm not going to go in with this afterwards. It can just be a little harsh and I'm still getting my skin acclimated to acids again. So I'm not trying to overload it. So when I use acids, I will use the next one I'm going to talk about. When I don't, I like to use this one. So I've kind of been exchanging them. Now, this is the tetrahexdecal exorbate vitamin C. This is my favorite vitamin C of all time. Y'all know what it is if you've watched any of my skincare videos. It is the Truth Treatment Systems Transdermal C Serum. This is the Big Mama Jamma. You do not have to buy the Big Mama Jamma. They have many sizes. They even have like a mini, mini size. <laughs> and this is expensive, I'm not gonna lie. But I use two drops of this a day in the mornings and it will last me up to a year for this big bottle. So when you kind of divide that by the months and 
how often and how long your other vitamin C serums last you, it, you might find it's not that much different. But this is an 80% tetrahexadecal exorbate form of stable vitamin C. It does not turn on me. I love it so much. I see the most difference in my skin when I use this product and truly this brand. It's been one of my favorites ever since it launched. It will continue to be. Whether or not you get Mad Hippie from Ulta or May Love or Timeless, I have used Timeless, I didn't see a difference, but some people swear by it. It does not matter, or whether you get some of these, I just really recommend having some kind of vitamin C in your routine. I'm kind of thinking morning right now, so uh, the next thing that I would do, I mean, I would cleanse, use a vitamin C, a moisturizer, and then the next product I'm going to talk about. Let's talk about moisturizers. I'm going to put a picture of my favorite daytime moisturizer because I'm out. And honestly, I have been using very small amounts of my nighttime moisturizer until I can repurchase this one. I don't know why I haven't repurchased this one, but it's the Beauty Counter Counter Time Soft Cream. Why couldn't I not think about it? My favorite daytime moisturizer. I've gone to two or three, gone, gone to, on through, two or three of these moisturizers and it just works so well for me under makeup. It's very lightweight, but it's still moisturizing. I can use it year round. I love it. Definitely think you need a moisturizer, even if you have oily skin. I have clients sit down all the time and I can, before I even touch their skin, can tell how dehydrated it is. And I don't even have to ask. When I say, what kind of skin would you think you have? They almost always say oily. And when I ask them what they do for their skincare, they almost always say they don't use a moisturizer because they're oily. And it's why your skin is dehydrated. Your skin, no matter whether it's oily, combo, dry, needs moisture. It's going to need different levels of moisture. I totally understand that. And there are so many different moisturizers out there for different skin types. So if you have super oily skin, be searching for that, that moisturizer that's good for oily skin. I like the Beauty Counter Matte Gel Cream. I use that in my kit for oily skin. The Dermalogica Active Moist. I also really like for my oily skin clients because I don't feel like it's too heavy. So I will list those down as well under moisturizers, but please do not fail to use a moisturizer no matter your skin type. Now the, I guess, fourth category, because we only have one more thing to talk about after this, is SPF. Y'all know I was not going to go through this video without talking about SPF. My mantra in life up to about five months ago when we don't have a bus stop anymore because we live out in the country is I don't go to the bus stop without my SPF on. I just do not step foot outside of the house without SPF ever. I wake up in the morning and I go straight into my bathroom before I go outside and wake my kids up, before I do breakfast, before I do anything and do my skincare routine. I want that SPF on my face. It is so important. There are people who are going to say, don't wear SPF if you're inside all day. I'm not one of those people because if you have windows in your house, you're getting sun. It, that's just all there is to it. If you say, oh, I just go run some errands, well, you're getting sun because if you look at some of those pictures that have gone viral in the past of truck drivers and one side of their face is horribly wrinkled and aged where the other side is not that bad, it's because they're exposed to sun through their windows. Windows are not an SPF protector. Windows keep the bugs out. They don't keep the sun out. So I truly believe that I'm, I'm somebody who will wear SPF every day whether I leave the house or not. Whether it's raining outside, whether it's 20 degrees or 120 degrees, it doesn't matter. I wear it every single day. I could talk about this all day long. Can you tell how very, very, very passionate I am about wearing your sun protection? Not only for aging benefits, but also for skin cancer. I don't think there's a single person watching that could raise their hand and say, yes, I want skin cancer. None of us do. So it's very, very important. And I was lucky enough to have a mom that made sure my moisturizer contained SPF from elementary school on. So I have worn SPF pretty religiously for the past 30 or so years. I'm gonna show you very quickly because I have been talking a lot. My favorite SPFs, the Elta MD Skincare UV SPF 44. Uh, I mean, look, it's just my favorite. Hands down, my favorite. Chad wears this every day, my girls wear this every day. I have probably two backups in my drawer at all times. Don't want to be without it. Gone through so many I couldn't count. Love this sunscreen. Another one that I love is the Hydrotint Pro Mineral Broad Spectrum Sunscreen SPF 36 from Elastin. I like this 
um, when I know that I'm not going to be wearing makeup, when I maybe just want to put a powder on, when I'm wearing a mask all day, I will put this on, set it with some powder foundation and be done. It really works for under a mask. Now I'm going to show you, these do have tints to them and I get someone to ask all the time. So this one up here is the Elta MD. This one is the Elastin. Elastin, you know, they look very similar in their tints. I find the Elastin has a bit more concentration of tint, so it comes off as more of a coverage and is a tad bit darker. But I'm, I mean, it's minimally darker, okay? But I do prefer a sunscreen with a tint in it because I also prefer to only use mineral sunscreens, which contains zinc oxide, which can be very white casty on the skin. So I like to use one with a tint. Another one that I love, and this is just the one that I pulled out. I love all the sunscreens that this company makes. It's from Color Science. This is the Sun Forgettable Total Perfection, and this one is in the Glow SPF 50 PA++++. So this does have a gorgeous glow to it. It doesn't have as much of a tint as the previous two that I talked about, but when you add them together, oh, it has very pretty. If you put that elastin and mix a little bit with this, I mean, that's like your, that's like your foundation for the day. So love those. And quite honestly, before anything else, that's what I would buy. Sunscreen would be my number one thing to buy if everything else was taken away. So we have talked about cleansers. We've talked about vitamin C, moisturizers, at least for the morning. I'll touch on them at night. And sunscreen, four out of five. What is my next of the five? Most important for 40 plus skin, hands down retinol. Either retinol or tretinoin cream. The difference is tretinoin cream has to be obtained through a prescription. Retinol you can buy over the counter. Tretinoin cream is going to be much stronger. It's going to work faster. It also can be a little irritating to people depending on the formula that they get. So it's going to be completely up to you with what you use, what you start with, what you end up with. I've done a whole video on this. My favorite is the Curology. This is the Tretinoin cream and it is also mixed with niacinamide and azelaic acid. I just finished my last bottle. This is my new one and I was able to up my prescription, my dermatology provider and I talked and she, after looking at my pictures of my bare face, said that I could go up. So I'm now at 0.07 TRET, 4% niacinamide and 5% azelaic acid. I use this every single night. Every single night I have gotten to where I will use this and I swear by this stuff. I love it so much. Now, if you are not comfortable starting out with a TRET, if you're not comfortable using a TRET, if you have never used a retinol before, you, I don't, personally think should go headfirst into a Trek cream unless you start out at a very, 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 very low dose. If you are not interested in Trek, if you've used it before and it's been irritating to you, please check this out because this has not irritated me at all. I've been using it for probably 10 months now. But if you just don't want to use a Trek, I also really like the Jan Marini Age Intervention Retinol Plus. Jan Marini has really good skincare, and I have been really enjoying this. I don't get much irritation out of this. I do find I peel a little bit with this, but it's nothing that's going to keep me from like leaving the house or even wearing makeup. Another retinol that I absolutely adore is the Skin Medica retinols. I have used the 0.25. I have used the 0.5, so I'll put a picture up um, with that. In fact, I had run out of my Curology the day before I went out of town last week. My new bottle was not set to get there until two days after I went out of town. So I needed something and I had a travel size of the Skin Medica 0.5 retinol. I took that with me. I used it every night. It was a great supplement until I could start using the Curology again. Tretinoin is the only proven anti-aging like drug, which is why you have to have a prescription for it. Um, on the market, as far as I know. And, you know, retinol is a derivative of it. So you are going to get results no matter what you use. If you use retinol, it is going to take longer. If you use TRET, do not use it for two months and say, I don't see a difference in my skin. It's going to take six months to a year and a half to see a huge difference in your skin with constant use of tretinoin and constant use of retinol. But stick with it. I promise you will see results. 
Now, those are my five categories. I'm going to share with you a few nighttime moisturizers I've been using lately, and then we are going to hit the road because I know I've been talking a long time. I have four that I've been rotating through because I am extra. The first is the Truth Treatment Transdermal Sebalm. This is a brand new one. I just got done using like a super mini one, and it is a clear balm. It does look like kind of blue, but really it's clear. And you need the tiniest amount, which is why I buy them in these little minis. I love that they have those options. It's obviously more affordable, and it, this is going to last, last me forever. The one I used last night was the Josh Rosebrook Vital Balm Cream, another blue, lovely cream. Love this so much. This has blue tansy in it, which my skin really enjoys. The next one also has blue tan tansy in it, and it is the May Lindstrom Skin Blue Cocoon. I've talked about this a lot and love it. <sighs> the smell, y'all. Holy cow. I can, I mean, even in perfumes now, I'm like, yep, that's blue tansy. And I know because I have May Lindstrom. And then the Belief True Cream Moisturizing Balm. They have an Aqua Balm. And they have a moisturizing balm, and I love the moisturizing balm. I have gone through, goodness, two or three of those. This used to be my holy grail nighttime moisturizer. Another one that I love and don't have is the Beauty Counter Countertime Supreme Cream. Will always be one of my favorites. So I will list all of those below, but please do not forget cleansers, vitamin Cs, good moisturizers, retinol, and SPF. Those are my five categories. Now, while I, while I showed you a ton of products, one product from each category will do, and I promise you, you will not regret it. So if you need a more simplistic routine, and it's just too overwhelming to use the 8,000 products that I use in my routines, this is what I recommend. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all are staying happy, healthy, safe, sane, and most of all that you go out and have a very blessed day.